You got people like this around you, country's full of them now. People walking around all day long, every minute of the day, worried about everything. <laughs> worried about the air, worried about the water, worried about the soil. Worried about insecticides, pesticides, food additives, carcinogens. Worried about radon gas, worried about asbestos. Worried about saving endangered species. Let me tell you about endangered species, all right? <laughs> saving endangered species is just one more arrogant attempt by humans to control nature. It's arrogant meddling. It's what got us in trouble in the first place. Doesn't anybody understand that? Interfering with nature. Over 90%, over, way over, 90% of all the species that have ever lived on this planet, ever lived, are gone. Whee! They're extinct. We didn't kill them all. <laughs> they just disappeared. That's what nature does. They disappear these days at the rate of 25 a day. And I mean regardless of our, our behavior. Irrespective of how we act on this planet, 25 species that were here today will be gone tomorrow. Let them go gracefully. <laughs> Leave nature alone. Haven't we done enough? We're so self-important. So self-important. Everybody's gonna save something now. Save the trees, save the bees, save the whales, save those snails. <laughs> and the greatest arrogance of all, save the planet. What? Are these fucking people kidding me? <laughs> save the planet? We don't even know how to take care of ourselves yet. We haven't learned how to care for one another. We're gonna save the fucking planet? I'm getting tired of that shit. Tired of that shit. Tired. I'm tired of fucking Earth Day. I'm tired of these self-righteous environmentalists, these white bourgeois liberals who think the only thing wrong with this country is there aren't enough bicycle paths. People trying to make the world safe for their Volvos. Besides, Environmentalists don't give a shit about the planet. They don't care about the planet. Not in the abstract, they don't. Not in the abstract, they don't. You know what they're interested in? A clean place to live. Their own habitat. They're worried that someday in the future they might be personally inconvenienced. Narrow, unenlightened self-interest doesn't impress me. Besides, there is nothing wrong with the planet. Nothing wrong with the planet. The planet is fine. The people are fucked. <laughs> Difference! Difference! The planet is fine! Compared to the people, the planet is doing great! It's been here four and a half billion years. Did you ever think about the arithmetic? Planet has been here four and a half billion years. We've been here, what, a hundred thousand? Maybe two hundred thousand? And we've only been engaged in heavy industry for a little over two hundred years. Two hundred years versus four and a half billion. And we have the conceit to think that somehow we're a threat? that somehow we're gonna put in jeopardy this beautiful little blue-green ball that's just a floating around the sun. The planet has been through a lot worse than us. Been through all kinds of things worse than us. Been through earthquakes, volcanoes, plate tectonics, continental drift, solar flares, sunspots, magnetic storms, the magnetic reversal of the poles, hundreds of thousands of years of bombardment by comets and asteroids and meteors, worldwide floods, tidal waves, worldwide fires, erosion, cosmic rays, recurring ice ages, and we think some plastic bags <laughs> and some aluminum cans are going to make a difference? The planet the planet. The planet isn't going anywhere. We are. We're going away. Pack your shit, folks. We're going away. And we won't leave much of a trace either. Thank God for that. Maybe a little styrofoam. Maybe. A little styrofoam. Planet will be here and we'll be long gone. Just another failed mutation. Just another closed end biological mistake. An evolutionary cul de sac. The planet will shake us off like a bad case of fleas. <laughs> a surface nuisance. <laughs> you want to know how the planet's doing? Ask those people at Pompeii who are frozen into position <laughs> from volcanic ash how the planet's doing. Want well, to know if the planet's all right? Ask those people in Mexico City or Armenia or a hundred other places buried under thousands of tons of earthquake rubble if they feel like a threat to the planet this week. <laughs> How about those people in Kilauea, Hawaii who build their homes right next to an active volcano and then wonder why they have lava in the living room? <laughs>
The planet will be here for a long, long, long time after we're gone, and it will heal itself, it will cleanse itself, because that's what it does. It's a self-correcting system. The air and the water will recover, the earth will be renewed, and if it's true that plastic is not degradable, well, the planet will simply incorporate plastic into a new paradigm, the earth plus plastic. <laughs> the earth doesn't share our prejudice towards plastic. Plastic came out of the earth. The earth probably sees plastic as just another one of its children. Could be the only reason the earth allowed us to be spawned from it in the first place. It wanted plastic for itself. <laughs> Didn't know how to make it. Needed us. Could be the answer to our age-old philosophical question, why are we here? <laughs> plastic. <laughs> Assholes. So. So. The plastic is here, our job is done, we can be phased out now. And I think that's really started already, don't you? I mean, to be fair, the planet probably sees us as a mild threat, something to be dealt with. And I'm sure the planet will defend itself in, in, in the uh, manner of a large organism, like a beehive or an ant colony can muster a defense. I'm sure the planet will think of something. What would you do if you were the planet trying to defend against this pesky, troublesome species? Let's see, what might... Hmm, viruses. Viruses might be good. They seem vulnerable to viruses. And uh, viruses are tricky, always mutating and forming new strains whenever a vaccine is developed. Perhaps this first virus could be one that, that compromises the immune system of these creatures. Perhaps a human immunodeficiency virus making them vulnerable to all sorts of other diseases and infections that might come along. And maybe it could be spread sexually, making them a little reluctant to engage in the act of reproduction. Well, that's a poetic note. And it's a start. And I can dream, can I? See, I don't worry about the little things. Bees, trees, whales, snails. I think we're part of a greater wisdom than we will ever understand. A higher order. Call it what you want. Know what I call it? The big electron. The big electron. Whoa. 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 It doesn't punish. It doesn't reward. It doesn't judge at all. It just is. And so are we. For a little while. Thanks for being here with me for a little while tonight. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, there's one thing you might have noticed I don't complain about. Politicians. Everybody complains about politicians. Everybody says they suck. Yeah. Well, where do people think these politicians come from? They don't fall out of the sky. They don't pass through a membrane from another reality. They come from American parents and American families, American homes, American schools, American churches, American businesses, and American universities, and they're elected by American citizens. This is the best we can do, folks. This is what we have to offer. It's what our system produces. Garbage in, garbage out. If you have selfish, ignorant citizens, if you have selfish, ignorant citizens, you're going to get selfish, ignorant leaders. The term limits ain't going to be any good. You're just going to wind up with a brand new bunch of selfish, ignorant Americans. So maybe, maybe, maybe it's not the politicians who suck. Maybe something else sucks around here like the public. Yeah, the public sucks. There's a nice campaign slogan for somebody. The public sucks. Fuck hope. Fuck hope. Because if it's really just the fault of these politicians, then where are all the other bright people of country? Where are all the bright, honest, intelligent Americans ready to step in and save the nation and lead the way? We don't have people like that in this country. Everybody's at the mall. Scratching his ass, picking his nose, taking his credit card out of his fanny pack and buying a pair of sneakers with lights in them. So I have solved this little political dilemma for myself in a very simple way. On election day, I stay home. I don't vote. Fuck them. Fuck them. I don't vote. Two reasons. Two reasons I don't vote. First of all, it's meaningless. This country was bought and sold and paid for a long time ago. They ship me shuffle around every four years. <laughs> doesn't mean a fucking thing. And secondly, I don't vote because I believe if you vote, you have no right to complain. People like to twist that around, I know. They say, they say, well, if you don't vote, you have no right to complain. But where's the logic in that? If you vote and you elect dishonest, incompetent people and they get into office and screw everything up, well, you are responsible for what they have done. You caused the problem. You voted them in. You have no right to complain. I, on the other hand, 
who did not vote, who did not vote, who, in fact, did not even leave the House on Election Day, and in no way responsible for what these people have done and have every right to complain as loud as I want about the mess you created that I had nothing to do with. So I know that a little later on this year you're going to have another one of those really swell presidential elections that you like so much. You'll enjoy yourselves. It'll be a lot of fun. I'm sure as soon as the election is over, your country will improve immediately. As for me, I'll be home on that day doing essentially the same thing as you. The only difference is when I get finished masturbating, I'm going to have a little something to show for it, folks. Thank you very much.